Welcome into the End the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting. We're going to take a look at the All Stakes Pick 4 at Saratoga for Saturday, but uh, should also remind uh, our listeners, Jim, that Kentucky Downs is opening up, and it's a short meet, but they always have huge fields and uh, no exception to that rule on this opening day. They've got a lot of money to give away down there because of their instant racing machines. Uh, so they are uh, giving away almost $2 million on Saturday, and they got 144 horses entered in 10 races. So they're going to be full for every race except maybe one has a less than 10, but uh, they got also eligibles. And I wish I had some winners to give to you, but <laughs> they are incredible betting races. I'll just say that. I don't have any winners yet. Uh, hopefully I'll have a couple on Saturday, but it's a great card to watch and, and bet on at Kentucky Downs on Saturday. You'll certainly find some good value there, and hopefully we can find a little bit for you at Saratoga. Let's start with the ninth race, and it is the Grade Three Saranac for three-year-olds on the turf. Got uh, Yoshida's in there, who was so impressive back here in the spring at Keeneland, and uh, bricks and mortar beat him last time. Uh, who did you land on for the Saranac? It was hard to separate those two. Yoshida got a little bit of a bad start uh, last time out, and, and gave uh, bricks and mortar. Um, a, a, an advantage at the beginning and they almost caught him at the end. So I, it's, it's a coin flip between those two. I think uh, bricks and mortar is undefeated for Chad Brown. So I, I kind of hate to go against him and that hall of fame, I think is going to be key to this, to this race. And I think those two are by far the best horses in here. They may not offer very much uh, betting value. A couple other horses I looked at, Mr. Haverkamp is two for two and hadn't been challenged at Woodbine. And one of them did come on the turf. So it's not just a synthetic. Uh, specialist, so he's he's two for two on on two different surfaces, and the one that you might look at at a price is Linda Rice's uh, Voodoo Song. Uh, looks like he's going to be the controlling speed in here. And uh, two back at Saratoga, he he had a 16 length lead after a half mile, one by three quarters of a length, stepping up in class here. But uh, if he gets out to an easy lead, he may go a long way. So I'm going to take uh, Bricks and Mortar and Yoshida. Maybe throw Voodoo Song in there in the exactas and the tries. I'm going to take Yoshida. Um, bricks and mortars are very impressive, but you get uh, maybe a tick more value with Yoshida, and I think there's not a whole lot of difference, as you said. Uh, I noted the, the bit of a bad break last time. Also, has a really sharp workout for this Saranac, and it's the second time that I read Ortiz is going to ride him, so that may have helped him learn a little bit about this horse and pay off the second time going up against bricks and mortar. The other one I would throw in there is rocketry who uh, I think has some upside left, but just not sure if he's as good as, as those top two. 10th race is one of the two grade ones. It's the grade one spin away for two year old Phillies at seven furlongs. Surprised they didn't get a bigger field here, but it is still a, a well-matched group. And so uh, interesting betting race. I'm going to take a little bit of a, of a reach here with a horse called Maya Malibu. Um, this horse had only a 65 buyer at Delaware, but I've seen these horses come up from these mid-Atlantic tracks or Monmouth before to Saratoga off mediocre buyers and run much better. So if it's a trainer like Graham Motion who has the confidence to send this silly up there, I'm going to take a second look. She was really heavily bet in her debut. Castellano signs on to ride, which adds to the intrigue. And I think if she could run second, you might get an, an overlay in the exacta because you got Chad Brown and Fletcher in here knocking heads. Um, so I'm going to play with Maya Malibu as my key in exactas and uh, try a little win bet on her as well. Got to use her with separation of powers for Chad Brown, Pierre Silver for Fletcher, and uh, Lady Ivanka or Rudy Rodriguez, and all of those were just ultra impressive uh, winners in their last starts. Uh, but I'm going to try to find a little value with Maya Malibu in here in the spinaway. How about you? I'm surprised they didn't get more than five fillies for this race. I mean, it's a grade one, $350,000 race, and it looks like they had to twist some arms to get the fifth rate, fifth filly in here, obvious, too, who has no shot whatsoever. Uh, I don't think you can come from Thistle down with a 46 buyer and compete against grade one, but they got her in the race, so I guess that, that makes a five-horse feel where they can have at least a trifecta wager. But I'm, I'm – uh, Maya Malibu, you could make a case for her, I, but I, could, I think you make a case for any of those other four outside of obvious two. I went with Pure Silver simply because she she was so impressive in the Adirondack. I mean, she went by nine and a half, uh, at, and just no contest whatsoever. And that's that's at six and a half furlongs. They stretch out to seven. 
back at Saratoga. Uh, hard to take anybody but Pure Silver in here for me, but separation of powers was very impressive as well. Broker maiden at Saratoga, um, but Pure Silver's got more experience, three for three. Lady Ivanka was very impressive also. So you've got a couple of maiden winners going against a horse that's raced three times, and I, even though the price is going to be low, I'm going to take uh, Pure Silver. I'm going to use all three of them and then pick four, though, that we'll talk about in a few minutes. I want to move on to the grade one Woodward. It's at a mile and an eighth. you got Gunrunner in there. And, uh, and uh, you know, Rally Cry had a nice big buyer last time, and um, I've seen Pletcher strike while the iron's hot with those times before. But, you know, Gunrunner's just been so impressive. I, I can't see him losing here. Can you? No, I can't. I was in, in Vegas the last three days, and I went to the wind to see what Gunrunner was in the uh, – future pool for uh, Breeders' Cup Classic, he was 3-2. to two. So I did, did not bet him at 3-2. <laughs> to two. I'm not going to take that, you know, two months out with, you know, chance he wouldn't get there. But he's he's awfully impressive. He's the best horse in North America right now. Looking forward to the Arrogate uh, rematch. Hope Arrogate gets his stuff back together. I, I'd play this race, uh, obviously take Gunrunner in the pick four. But I, I think Neolithic, um, the Dubai World Cup, he was, you know, he was third behind Gunrunner and Arrogate. And, uh only a couple links behind Gunrunner. So I, I'm going to do a cold exact to here taking Gunrunner on top of the Olympic. Maybe he'll pay six or eight bucks, especially if Rally Cry gets a lot of um, a lot of attention. But uh, big jump up from a listed stakes race to a grade one against the best horse in the country. So I'm going to get, do a Gunrunner Neolithic cold exacta. Um, move on to the 12th race, the grade three Glen Falls. This for Phillies and Mares going along on the turf, a mile and three eighths here. And this is the, the one where you can maybe find a, a, a price and a, and a nice, big, juicy uh, exacta or trifecta payoff, if you can be on the right ones. Who is that going to be in here? Well, I'm not sure this is the best betting race of the sequence. There's no doubt about that. Um, I, I kind of landed on uh, Sarandia, the German horse that they shipped over here to run the Beverly D. And uh, she only got beat two and a half lengths by Decida and Dona Bruja. And, uh, you know, she was 21 to 1, didn't get much support there, but got a 98 buyer. And uh, that's a that's a much better crowd that she was running against that day than than has made this race. This is a nice race. But it's a it's a Grade Three, uh, very evenly matched. And I'm thinking she may be a little classier than the rest of these in here. But uh, there's no way I would use fewer than five in the pick four, and I may even go all when we get to that. Um, Estrachata, Lottie, and Somersault all come out of the Uwaya. Uh, stakes race at a mile and a half, and they finished within a half length of each other. So if you use one of them, you got to use all three of them. War Flag, uh, the four horse, exits a couple of really good races at Monmouth, including the uh, Grade Three Matchmaker, where she lost to uh, uh, Wakila. Um, the other horses uh, in here, Grand Motion has Happiness, the one horse that, that's got a real shot, and I think um, I think Harmonize, a classy filly for Bill Mott, has a shot. The eight horse. This is a wide open race, and I'm going to go deep in the pick four. But I'm going to take a uh, a win shot on the German uh, shipper Sarandia. This was a, a tough one for for me to key on anybody. I, I finally settled on War Flag. Third start off the layoff um, makes me think that she might be ready to run her best one. Um, her European form uh, suggests that this longer distance should really suit her very well. So that was a factor for me as well. So I'm going to. Uh, start with War Flag in here, but uh, like you, I would be spreading as, as far as your budget allows. I think the two on the inside for Graham Motion, I just always have a lot of respect for him in these long races, Happiness and Lottie, uh, I, I want to have on my ticket because they're trained by Motion. Um, Estrachata and Somersault I'm going to include as well. Um, I'm going to stop there because I uh, went a little deeper in a couple of other spots. Um but um, it, it's a very, very tough race. But more flag for me in the Glen Falls. Let's get to our pick four tickets. It's an all-stakes pick four. I included rocketry in the first leg, so I got three there, two, four, and nine. Then I'm using um, all four of the logical horses in the spinaway, throwing out the one that you mentioned from Thistle. I did include Rally Cry on a pick four along with Gunrunner, thinking that if it's Pletcher, big figure last time, if he were to upset them, it would certainly inflate the pick four. And then I let, that left me at five with the five I mentioned in the Glen Falls. If I added one more, it would be the uh, the German uh, horse that you mentioned. Um, and uh, I thought Harmonize was certainly worth a long look. So 
if you leave out rocketry on the first leg, maybe you can add those two on the last leg. I'll throw that out as a suggestion. But uh, the ticket I've got is three by four by two by five. What's yours look like? Well, I took three horses in the first leg, um, Yoshida, Bricks and Mortar, and Voodoo Song, two, four, five. I'm going to use the four. Uh, I'm going to take all except the two. If that two beats me, I'm just going to lose my ticket. So I'm going to take all four except the uh, the long shot in the second leg. That's one, three, four, five. Um, and that's uh, Separation of Powers, uh, Lady Ivanka, Pure Silver, and the five horse Maya Malibu, who was your pick. Single gun runner, the two horse. And I'm going to take all in the last race. I, I can't knock it down to fewer than five or six, so I'm just going to go ahead and take all. Not a very expensive ticket, really. It's a uh, single gun runner. It's $40.50. Best of luck with your wagers on Saturday, be they at uh, Saratoga or down at Kentucky Downs or out at Del Mar, where they have a real contentious uh, Del Mar debutante, a great one for uh, two-year-old fillies out there. Keep an eye on those uh, filly races for uh, Breeders' Cup Day down the road. And best of luck this weekend. This is the In the Money Podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.